Hello and welcome to the Race Asylum YouTube channel. So we're back with a Team Taurus guide and this time we've got King Gears doing it in the Mercedes for us so I'll leave you to him. Hello and welcome to my guide for round four of the Tora League at Autopolis. Race one is on the short course in the dry. Race two will be on the full course in heavy rain that hopefully, fingers crossed, will dry out but Half of the slots are random, so we'll just have to wait and see. Turn one then, my breaking point is the orange paint on the barrier there. Again, depending what tyres you're on or the conditions, you can either need to break a little bit before, or in my McGann, I can break a bit after that corner. So as you can see here, there is tyre markings all over the tarmac, which shows you kind of the ideal line. You want a sort of later apex come through. Just be careful on the power. Make sure you're not going to run wide there. Because that will uh, definitely put a dent in any hopes of a good result in the race. Coming into this next right-hander. Painted barrier on the left there. The orange or this access road. I usually break a little bit past it. So sort of halfway between that and the 50 metre board. Third gear just modulating the throttle through here, staying kind of in the middle of the track through that part, come into the curbing for this part. When you get to about here with the curb on the right nearly ending is when you want to get on the brakes for the tricky hairpin here. Try and keep all the way to the inside. When I'm facing the orange painted barrier again is when I know I can get on the power and I'm not going to run wide on the exit. Stay to the right. When this curbing on the right ends is when you want to just dab a brake, downshift to third or fourth, depending on your car. Mercedes is third and it's back up to fourth. And you want to be sort of about here towards the, it's a late apex on the corner. And as soon as you're just pointing away from that Marshall stand is when you can get on the power Should stay on the track and not run wide. And now for this, the tricky part that obviously is the short circuit. My breaking point is the arrow there on the left. And yeah, it's a later apex. So again, look, you can see the quite handy tyre markings there a late apex you sort of want to be coming into the curbing just bef just before the curb ends on the right and when you're facing the um pit building there when you're facing it when you sort of just past it is when you know right i can get on the throttle cut that last little bit of left obviously not too much because it will give you a track limits and yeah that's pretty much it for this track nice simple and short so, turn one, orange barrier on the left. So, hard on the brakes, trail brake off. Third gear, straight on the power as soon as you can. Into this right-hander, look for the access road on the left. Just a bit past, again, down third gear. Come into the kerb there. Bit of throttle control, so you can position the car over to the right end of the kerb second gear orange barrier in the left or straight ahead there on the left and you get on the power kerb ends dab a brake downshift late apex face the marshall's hut straight on the power and as you come around here take the car over to the left last arrow sign on the brake Follow the tyre marks all the way around. Get on the power as soon as you can. Now, obviously, overtaking places. Turn one is probably one of the better ones in the last corner as well. Turn one, you can either go up the inside or the outside. You can pull off moves on the outside at turn one, although obviously it's very difficult. And it's also a very easy corner to defend if you take to the inside. 
I had a great battle there with Rotzilla in one of the seasons where I just kept trying to go around the outside of him and it just wouldn't happen for me because he did some brilliant defending. Again, you can, this is a very tricky section to go side by side. You can try and overtake here. It's very easy for cars to go deep. So if you try and keep an eye out for that, you can hug to the inside and maybe nick a position. Here, it's not really worth overtaking. So if you go side by side, one of you will probably end up over there on the grass and into the wall. And the last corner, it's quite a nice bit of wide track. So again, you could very easily get on the inside and make a move, but just be wary that they might be able to get the cut back on you and they'll probably be straight back on you going into turn one. So if you make a move at the last corner, be prepared to defend it going into turn one or you could obviously just get out right behind and fight your time and then try and make the move into turn one. Well, Topolis is well known for being one of the trickier tracks to overtake on. It's not in particularly narrow but it just the layout itself just doesn't lend itself to lots of overtaking opportunities. Just finish this quick lap. Mercedes is obviously a lovely car, I don't have to worry about oversteer on the throttle, it's very much like Gran Turismo Sport, this car you can just get straight on the power and it won't try and kill you. you see there you go, just about making that left hander and not running wide. Coming to the final corners. go not particularly fast times but hopefully that is of some help for you guys and i will catch you on the track at some point i'm sure thank you hi hello um my name is king is as you can see there top left um and this is my lap guide for round four of this season of tour league which is a wet race at Autopolis for race two. So what I'll do now is I will drive slowly around the track, show you what I use for braking markers in the rain compared to the dry. And then I'll do a quick, quick couple of fast laps just to show you. So turn one. Normally I would be using the orange mark on the barrier in the dry, obviously because it's wet, I'm probably using this little orange square thing that's on the barrier on the left there. Um, just bear in mind that if you brake too far over to the left that you'll see the puddles that are there on the left hand side of the track. So as usual with turn one here, or top list, you kind of, in the dry, you have thread marks you can follow. It's kind of a later apex. Careful obviously getting on the power because of the rain. Coming into the next corner, usually I would be braking again at the orange mark, or that little access road, if it was dry. In the rain, it's just a little bit before it, probably on that 100 metre board. It's probably about right. And into this corner again, just be careful. Not, I don't really want to go on the curb. This part of the track is all about throttle control. Kind of want to stay in the middle, then come in and then use again in the dry would be the end of this curve on the right or just before it so in the wet it's probably you're looking at about here so i mean you could use one of the vans on the right as a breaking point i normally just gauge it by distance to the corner so i'd probably get to about here and go yep yeah, it's wet i need to break this corner very sketchy in the dry in certain cars so even worse in the rain 
be wary if you hug the inside too much and get on the kerb it will over rotate the car normally when i get to about here in the corner just past the orange painted barrier part is when i know that i can get on the throttle and i won't understeer off the track so coming into the next corner in the dry i use the end of this curve here on the right obviously in the rain you'll need to brake it a little bit before and it's just a little tap of brakes just to get the car sort of slowed down just enough for this corner which is a late apex again watch the curve because it's wet and then normally if it's dry as soon as i'm pointing towards that marshall stand in the distance is when i will get straight on the throttle and I know that pretty much 99% of the time I'm not going to run wide unless the tyres are obviously really worn. Because it's wet, I'd probably wait till you're a little bit past it. Watch it coming on the power because turning and accelerating in the rain, you will oversteer the car. So coming into probably a tricky hairpin. In the dry, I normally use the 50 metre marker. Because it's wet, I'll use this arrow here on the right again you don't really want to be on this curve on the inside because it will over rotate the car careful on the throttle here is the penalty zone which is always something to be aware of especially when it the corner immediately after is quite a sketchy downhill right-hander because it's very very easy to turn right so obviously if you've got a car that's serving a penalty and they own ghost they're going to be traveling a lot less speed than you are and it can always sometimes get a bit messy down at the bottom of the hill here so in the dry i would normally 50 meters my board on the left dab a brake turn in because it's wet I'd be braking somewhere around 75 meters, sort of here. Again, I just tend to gauge it by the distance from the corner. It'd be third gear, just be wary coming in. As I say, you don't want to end up, the amount of people that you see go off left there, just from understeering off. Again, just be careful with the throttle coming through here, just gauge the speed really by the grip come over to the right then left try not to get too much on here in the dry it's fine and then normally about here is where you break for this tricky sort of double apex right hander in the dry it would be second gear but probably in the wet i'd leave it in third so you sort of follow the line around late apex on here careful because it's very very easy to spin the car here especially on this left there the rear end on this mercedes especially tends to want to come round which is fine if you can control it because it helps you get around the corner obviously if you can't catch it then you're just gonna spin off um, in the dry for this i normally use the painted orange barrier part again but for the wet i use the start of this cone or you can use uh, start the cone start the curb or you can use the uh, van which i think is an ambulance over on the left there and again this, there's a few ways to take this corner you can either hug the inside and stay really tight to the curb all the way around or i tend to stay out wide and then cut in for a later apex to try and make the exit as straight as possible so normally when i get to about here in the dry i can get straight on the power in the wet it's just a little bit after so sort of probably when you're about here is when you'll know that you can just get straight on the power and then this left hander would be flat in the dry it kind of is in the wet but just be wary that you can run wide onto the grass so what i'll do now is a quick couple of fast laps and try not to die so 100 meter board is there the orange marker just before just careful braking in third gear careful on the throttle very very easy to go deep at turn one or top of this and run wide on the exit 
so 100 meters there, brake, down to second just to try and slow the car, back up to third, stay in the middle of the track, to try and keep the speed going through these double left-hander, and use the kerb on the right as your brake marker, turn in, you could use third gear out of here, but I find it a little bit too slow, so I'd risk it in second and just be very, very careful on the power. End of that kerb on the right, turn in. As soon as you point into the marshals, stand there on the power, just be very, very wary. Coming into this tricky hairpin left, the second arrow sign on the right, brake into second. Again, very cautious here, the car will definitely want to spin on you. Coming down the hill, 75 metres, so about here, third gear, turn in, end of the kerb on the left, turn in again, you want to try and hug to the right as much as possible, just to make this left hander easier for them to following right because otherwise you end up too far over to the right as you come into this corner which makes it too tight so again careful coming out of here in third gear watch that little elevation change on the bump because that's what makes the rear of this car go loose and yeah final corner start out wide and then slowly come in towards that little axis road on the right watch that left Away we go. This lap I'll try and go a little bit quicker. So again, the little orange marker on the left. Down to third gear. Get, make sure the car isn't going to want to steer off. We get up the power. A little bit too much grass there from myself. Down in here, 100 meter board, third gear, just modulating the throttle, so you try and keep a nice line through there, curve on the right again, second gear, there's various ways obviously you can take the hairpin, you can go deep, cut back or stay tight, um, curve on the right, I'll change up to four gear. Marshall stand on the power. As you can see, the rear's trying to come round on me there. Second arrow sign on the right. It's not a, a uh, not a particularly difficult track to drive in the wet compared to some on the game. I mean, I'm not particularly good in the rain, I don't think. But I've managed to not crash so far in the laps that I've done prior to making this video, so it's not too bad. It's just a few of these corners you just need to be wary of, like this one here, this bump as you go over there. As you can see, the car wants to get a bit loose on the rear. Again, final turn. There's, say, there's various lines. Now for overtaking at this track, um, there aren't that many places that I would recommend to overtake. Turn one is definitely one of them. Um, you can you can do both ways. You can overtake on the inside or the outside. It is obviously a lot harder to go around the outside, and you have to be wary that you may get knocked off the track. Because it is, whilst you can go side by side through turn one, it is it is very difficult. Um, I remember myself and Roxilla had a cracking race here where he kept defending the inside, and I just couldn't get around the outside of him. It was a great bit of driving by Rocky. So yeah, turn one is probably the easiest place, but also one of the hardest because it is quite easy to defend. 
the next place again is obviously down into this right hander um, again there's two ways of taking this because obviously if you're on the right for this corner you're then on the outside for the double left so again if you can you want to sort of go around the outside so you've got the inside for these two corners here to try and get in front before you come into the slow hairpin this is a tricky place to pass just because it's so slow Again, here is very difficult just because the cars tend to want to understeer out wide, so it's very difficult to go too wide around there is very hard. And this hairpin again is a good place that you can try and overtake. It's possible to do the inside or the outside, depending obviously how the driver ahead or yourself defends against someone possibly overtaking you. This downhill right hand up, you can make an overtake, but again, it is a very sketchy corner to try and make it work. And then all through this final section, uh, sector is very, very hard. You can possibly make a move to stick in this double apex right. But generally through the final sector here at Autopolis it is just follow the leader and wait for, to uh, try and get past the turn one because even if you do get past someone in sector three they'll probably come straight back at you and attempt to get past them to turn one so it's better to play the long game get ahead after turn one and then you can defend for the rest of the lap or try and build a gap to that car um, pit entry always a tricky one here at Autopolis obviously you've got the pit line that you can't cut this is very very tricky obviously try and get as close to that as possible and then the pit exit is very straightforward no bends or anything to worry about just watch the white line on the exit so yeah that's about it for this one Hopefully that's been of some help for you guys and I will see you on track soon. Take care, bye. So hopefully that helped you out then. Thanks to King Gears for doing that guide for us. Uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you for the next one.